Dear brothers and sisters, this is the second video of the Good News series having to do with the religious tradition of church on Sundays. Uh, in 321 AD, Constantine passed an edict legislating the venerable day of the sun to be the official day of rest for the Roman Empire in honor of his sun god, Saul Invictus. In 336 or 364 AD, the Roman Catholic Church issues Canon 29 at their Council of Laodicea, which states that, quote, Christians must not Judaize by resting on the Sabbath, but must work on that day, honoring rather the Lord's day by resting if possible as Christians. However, if any shall be found Judaizing, let them be shut out from Christ, unquote. Of particular interest in this quote is their characterization of Sunday as the Lord's Day. This reference to Sunday as the Lord's Day was first, first used by followers of the sun god Mithras. Dr. F.J. Dolger, a Roman Catholic theologian, relates, Since the days of Emperor Aurelian in the second half of the third century, the sun god cult under the title of Saul Invictus, or the unconquered sun, had experienced a tremendous furtherance at the hands of the state. Other pagan cult groups of that time also likened their supreme deity to the sun god, or completely equated it to the sun god. Attis was a light deity, Osiris too was sun god, Baal Hammon of Carthage was sun Baal, Jupiter Angshur of Teresina and Jupiter of Dolish and Helipoli were all sun god. Sabazios had become one with the sun gods, and the Persian sun god Mithras had instituted a missionary campaign as no other religion next to Christianity. For all these religious fellowships, Constantine's imperial Sunday law meant a privilege. They all felt themselves honored when Sunday was specially festively dedicated to their deity, the sun. From the previous slides, we've seen the origin of this Church on Sunday tradition, that it started it with an edict in AD 321 from the Roman Emperor Constantine in honor of his sun god. The Roman Catholic Church, with Canon 29 from the Council of Laodicea, subsequently threatened people who wanted to keep the Sabbath commandment of the Creator and tried to force them to keep the idolatrous Church on Sunday tradition instead. Is there any scriptural instruction or commandment from the Creator or our Messiah to dis disregard the Sabbath and instead go to church every Sunday? Absolutely not. The following slides are verses regarding the Creator's Sabbath, which you will probably never hear mentioned if you attend a traditional Sunday church. The Creator's instructions regarding the Sabbath. Exodus chapter 20 verses 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it kadosh or separate. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh thy Elohim. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Exodus chapter 23, verse 12. Six days thou shalt do thy work, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest, that thine ox and thine ass may rest, and the son of thy handmaid and thy stranger may be refreshed. Exodus, Exodus chapter 31, verses 14 through 16. You shall keep the Sabbath there for for it is kadosh unto you. Every one that defileth it shall be surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done, but the seventh is the Sabbath of weekly Sabbath's rest. Kadosh to Yahweh. Whosoever doeth any work on the the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. Exodus chapter 35 verses 2 through 3. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be to you a kadosh day, a Sabbath of weekly Sabbaths rest to Yahweh. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Leviticus chapter 23 verse 3. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of weekly Sabbaths of rest, a kadosh convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of Yahweh in all your dwellings. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verses 12 through 15. Guard the Sabbath day to keep it kadosh, as Yahweh, Yahweh your Elohim hath commanded thee. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh your Elohim. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. And remember that thou was a servant in the land of Egypt, and that Yahweh thy Elohim 
brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore Yahweh thy Elohim commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. The Creator's Instructions Regarding the Sabbath Many will argue that the Sabbath is not for Christians, only for the Jewish people. However, of the six previous scriptural passages giving instructions regarding the Sabbath day, three of them, Exodus chapter 20 verse 9, Leviticus chapter 23 verse 3, and Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 14, specifically identify the Sabbath as the Sabbath of Yahweh thy Elohim. Scripturally, the Sabbath is not identified as the Sabbath of the Jewish people or of the Hebrews or of the Israelites or Semitic peoples. The Sabbath is identified in the scriptures as the Sabbath of Yahweh our Elohim, our creator and maker of the universe. The clear implication is that regardless of our ethnic background or lineage, if we believe in Yahweh, our creator and maker of the universe, then we should all be keeping his Sabbath. This is seen in Exodus chapter 20 verse 10, Exodus chapter 23 verse 12, and Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 14 in the reference the Creator makes to the stranger keeping the Sabbath day. Who are the strangers that were keeping the Sabbath among the children of Israel? Exodus chapter 12 verse 38 tells us that a mixed multitude was brought out of Egypt along with the children of Israel. So people from all so it's extremely likely that people from all ethnic backgrounds were keeping the Sabbath along with the children of Israel. Isaiah chapter 56 verses 2 through 7 Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Neither let the son of the stranger that hath joined himself to Yahweh speak, saying, Yahweh hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith Yahweh unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths, and choose the things that please me, and take hold of my covenant. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to Yahweh, to serve him and to love the name of Yahweh, to be his servants, every one that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and taketh hold of my covenant, even them will I bring to my Kadosh mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. So if someone tells you that the Sabbath is only for Jewish people, ask them according to whom. Our Creator specifically states in Isaiah chapter 56 verses 2 through 7 that if a stranger or son of a stranger, someone of non-Hebrew lineage or ethnicity, loves him and seeks to serve him, then that stranger will observe and keep our Creator's Sabbaths as he has instructed us all to do. This is in addition to Exodus chapter 20 verse 10, Exodus chapter 23 verse 12, and Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 14, where he is clearly instructing the strangers among the children of Israel to keep the Sabbath also. Isaiah chapter 58 verses 13 through 14. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my Kadosh day, and call the Sabbath a delight, Kadosh, separate of Yahweh, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in Yahweh, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of Yahweh hath spoken it. Jeremiah chapter 17 verses 21 through 22. Thus saith Yahweh, Take heed to yourselves, and bear no burden on the Sabbath day, nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem, neither carry forth the burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day, neither do you any work, but separate the Sabbath day as I commanded your fathers. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 24 And it shall come to pass, if you diligently hearken unto me, saith Yahweh, to bring in no burden through the gates of this city on the Sabbath day, but separate the Sabbath day, to do no work therein, then shall there enter into the gates of this city kings and princes sitting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, they and their princes, the men of Yehuda, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and this city shall remain forever. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 27. But if you will not hearken unto me to separate the Sabbath day, and not to bear a burden even entering in at the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then will I kindle a fire in the gates thereof, and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem, and it shall not be quenched. In the last few verses in Jeremiah, our Creator seems to be encouraging the people of Jerusalem 
to remember and to keep the Sabbath. He indicated that if they did so, their city would remain forever. However, if they would not keep the Sabbath, then the city would be destroyed as it subsequently was by Nebuchadnezzar for their disobedience. Our Creator and Savior tells us that the Sabbath day is a sign between Him and His people. Exodus chapter 31 verse 13. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am Yahweh that doth make you kadosh. Exodus chapter 31 verse 17. It, the Sabbath, is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Exodus, Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 12. Moreover also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am Yahweh that makes them kadosh. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 20 Make Kadosh my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that you may know that I am Yahweh your Elohim. The Messiah and the Sabbath. It is clear from the Gospels that our Messiah, Adonai Yahushua, kept the Sabbath, as can be seen in the following verses. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Mark chapter 6, verse 2. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence had this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands. Our Messiah also reveals his identity to us using the Sabbath. In Matthew chapter 12 verse 8, Mark chapter 2 verse 28, and Luke chapter 6 verse 5, he reveals that he is the Lord or Adon of the Sabbath. Furthermore, in Adonai Yahushua's Olivet prophecy of Matthew chapter 24, he advised us to pray that we would not have to flee in the winter or on the Sabbath day. This clearly indicates that at the time of the Great Tribulation in the future, his followers would still be observing the Sabbath, the Sabbath in Messiah's kingdom. Isaiah chapter 66 verses 22 through 23. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, saith Yahweh, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith Yahweh. From the last two verses we see that his servants will be keeping the Sabbath day not only during the future great tribulation, but also in his kingdom that he will establish on the new earth and the new heavens which he will make in the future. Where is the scriptural justification for not keeping the Sabbath now, today? There is not a single verse in the scriptures where our Creator instructs us to hold religious services every Sunday. On the other hand, there is no shortage of verses in which our Creator and our Savior is encouraging us to keep His Sabbaths kadosh. The religious tradition of church on Sunday is in effect attempting to negate our Creator's commandment to keep the Sabbath day kadosh. In its place, the Sunday tradition has been substituted, which had its origins in the once ubiquitous and now hidden cult of sun worship. This is specifically and expressly prohibited and forbidden by Deuteronomy chapter 12 verses 30 through 32. According to Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, Adonai Yahushua is the everlasting Father. According to Jeremiah chapter 23 verses 5 through 6, Adonai Yahushua is Yahweh in the flesh, our Creator. According to Revelation chapter 19 verses 11 through 13, Adonai Yahushua is faithful and true, and His word is the truth. We've all been deceived by false and idolatrous religious systems. May we all repent of the false and idolatrous traditions we've been brought up with. And may we cling in obedience to the truth of His Word, the Hebrew Scriptures. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video and I hope you get a chance to take a look at the other videos in this series. Thanks.